everybody. Hi. Um, it's so good to see you. It's, you know, uh, it's five o'clock on a Thursday. And um, I already saw a couple people that I haven't seen in a minute. Um, who did I see? Was it M. Sujan? No, no. There was somebody who, who said it's been a hot minute since she caught a live. And there's a couple live streamers that I listen to that I've been so busy. I've just missed a bunch of their streams. And it's actually, I mean, it's not. I, it's fun to watch live, right? But it's also fun to sort of store up a bunch of content. So when you're doing stuff and you're, or you're driving or something like that, you can you can enjoy it, right? So I hope you're uh, in the replay gang, because um, I am sometimes too. So uh, it's just, oh yeah. So some people got a YouTube notification. That's interesting, and not a Twitch one. Hmm. Interesting. We're learning. We're learning lots of things every time we do this still. Um, so I, I say hi to everybody. Welcome, everybody. Um, I see familiar faces and a couple of people. Yeah, I haven't seen in a, in a minute. Um, wonderful to be here with you. What if like 5 p.m. is like a sweet spot for people? Part of the reason we're doing these quilt nerd shorties, just these I attempt my ever, ever, um, ever present attempt to make a short um, episode of this show. Um, part of it is, you know, to play with times, you know, so I don't know that, you know, making like a, hmm, well, I could do a poll right now, actually. Interesting. Um, but, you know, doing some sort of feedback Google form or something seems like one more thing to add to a list. But I mean, at some point, you know, uh, seeing when, you know, if the times for the show work for people, we tried a morning show for a while, which was good. I mean, I'll, I don't see any of these experiments as anything but, um, learning. So the morning show was fun. People who don't live in this country, the time zone was, was good for some of them, but I don't know. I don't know. It didn't, I don't know. I thought it was going to be like the best thing since muffins, <laughs> but it was, and it was, I don't know. We're going to keep experimenting. And so now it's, it's, it's quitting time doo -doo, on Thursday. I've been writing all day. I have, I took on some work for a friend and it's a lot of writing. I'm writing about watches, actually. Anyway, we don't have time for this. Um, it's fascinating stuff. Okay, so, but, uh, yeah. So I've been in writing mode, but now we're transitioning to quilt mode. And I would really like to make a recorded content video about Rodka Donnell. Yeah. Nancy Bavore, the new president of American Quilt Study Group, she corrected me because when I was with when I was at the uh, board meeting for the International Quilt Museum, uh, I mentioned Radka Donnell. I must have said uh, Radka Donnell, and she corrected me and said it was Donnell. Either that or I said Radka Donnell, and she said Radka Donnell. So now I don't remember. But Nancy, before, thank you for correcting me. I was probably just excited to talk to you and couldn't retain the information you gave me because I think you're great. Um, anyway, so so I'm going to talk about this this woman. Um, when I did the first, the first few months of Patchwork and Prose, uh, which is ending, I think, next month. Yeah, it's been a whole year now, that block of the month program for Quilt Folk. Uh, it's been wonderful. It's been so interesting, and I've loved doing it. Um, one of the first segments that I did for that project was on Radka Donnell. I think it's Donnell. Um, and so, so I, made, I made some content for, for that project. This is different. I mean, it's... I'm making content now about Rodka for the second time. It's very different from what I presented to them to, in the 10 minutes that I had to, 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 um, to share some information with the Patrick and Prose people. But anyway, so I had some stuff gathered already, which is great. Um, and I'm going to read you Rodka Donnell's uh, Wikipedia entry. Okay, so this, this woman passed away in 2013. In fact, I was looking at uh, um, her all of her information. I'm going to read to you from something Bob Shaw uh, wrote about her, quilt historian, 
quilt uh, dealer who knew her very well. Uh, when she passed away, he wrote something really uh, great uh, about Radka, and so I'll be reading that. But I was looking at, at some of the materials, and uh, she passed away almost exactly 10 years ago, uh, February 13th, 2013. She passed away in Switzerland, uh, where she had lived for many years. So yeah, so this is uh, the 10th year anniversary of Radka Donald's passing, and let's look at her work. I think, I think you're going to like this. I really do, because... I know some of you are familiar with her, but a lot of people aren't. And let me just let me just give you a preview. This she wrote this. Rodka Donnell wrote this book, Quilts as Women's Art, a Quilt Poetics. A long time ago, when I first started this show, I read a little bit from this book, and I'm going to read a little bit from it today, uh, as I show you some of her quilts. And I actually have a lot of them at this point, which is exciting. So uh, let's let's go, let's go. Uh, and thank you, thank you so much um, to the to all you subscribers, all you subscribers, um, and folks who who renewed. I believe I saw Sandy. Thank you so much for renewing in Prairie Susie. Anybody who does that or cheers bits or anything like that, I really appreciate it. Okay, so let me get small, and I will show you what I know about this person and the work that she made in the world. She did some pretty cool stuff. Okay, let's go to this and I'm going to zoom in on some of these these works um, oh man I'm gonna zoom in on all of them and and actually before I start reading what I'm gonna do is I want you to get a sense of of her body of work her style okay so I'll go back through these quilts um, but but I want you to have an overview okay because what are we getting into right who who is this person we're gonna learn but what kind of work did she make so 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 this is called Summer Rain, Summer Rain, and it was made in 1983, okay? Radka Donnell was born in 1960, oh no, no, sorry, sorry. She started making quilts in 1965. She was born in Bulgaria in 1928, okay? She came to the United States in 1951, so she was, yeah, I mean, she was in her 20s when she came to the United States, okay? And also to give you some context before we jump into, you know, more of this. And remember, if you've never seen Quilt, um, I almost said Quilt Folk, if you've never seen Quilt Nerd before, this is an exploration with you. It's not a presentation, it's not a lecture. I'm learning with you. It's my favorite thing to do in the whole wide world. Standing up <laughs> or sitting down, sorry. So, so you know, I don't have everything like ready. It's not. So I'm not uh, defending a dissertation. So, so what I want to do uh, too right now is tell you. So this this book we're going to read from. But, but um, uh, when we talk about her work, I mean she is in this book, pioneering quilt artists. Okay, 1960 to 1980. So she's making you know summer rain here that I just showed you, 1983. Um, you know, this is the era that we're talking about. She's a 20, uh, second half of the 20th century artist. Like I, like I just read, she started making quilts in 1965 uh, when she was in her mid-30s, almost 40. This quilt uh, was made in 1977. It's called L for Love, 88 by 102. Again, we're going to go into these more. If, you're from, if you recall, I mean, I think many of you will be familiar with Susan Hoffman, Right and Molly Upton, that kind of like d dynamic duo who was Molly Upton and Susan Hoffman were both active in the 1970s making quilts. Susan Hoffman, uh, lo longer than that, maybe 1960s too. Anyway, Molly Upton passed away pretty young, but Susan Hoffman continued to work. And, and I think you can really see um, not, not derivative-ness, not derivative qualities, but, but a, a conversation, kind of a this style of quilt, this, these strips, you know, this strippy stuff, and uh, um, hang on, let me get rid of that stuff. Da, 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 da. I like to get rid of these little guides. Um, this strippy style, um, sort of not monochrome, but um, not monochromatic, but sort of uh, tonal quilts. Like you have cold, cold colors, warm colors. Uh, the volume is is usually sort of. Uh, disparate this is this is a bit later this is 2002 so 1976 is this quilt here and it's called hopscotch 
Um, and a lot of the, the pictures that I've got from you, and, and I apologize because I, I can't look at the chat too much, although, oh my God, Mark Wesley. Um, Mark Wesley said, I can see the, I can, I can feel the season in that quilt, Summer Rain. I agree, I agree. Um, God bless you, Stephanie Cake. If it's, I should ask you, like, do you, do you think you have time to tune in to the shorty? And then if you can, like, just please be with me. <laughs> you know? I don't know. It's a crack up. Um, anyway, anyway, so so uh, so hopscotch, you know, 1976. There's one. Let me show you one other. What is this? That's 2006. We'll come back to that. 2004. Okay. All right. All right. So summer rain. Yeah, Mark Wesley. True that. Okay. Let's 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 have this one on the screen for a minute while we are. Um, are looking auntie sin my mom's favorite color is red she'd love hopscotch um and i want to say hello to all the youtube folks and the facebook folks the few the proud the quilt nerd the quilt nerd in you okay here is here the first thing i'm going to read is this description in 2003 uh she so that's 20 years ago right 20 years ago 10 years before she passed away, um, there was an exhibit of her work in, yes, it is quilted, eat your coach. Um, there was an exhibit of her work in the Robert Hillestad Textile Gallery at the University of Nebraska. And one of the people who was a big, you know, mover and shaker, uh, you know, at the University of Nebraska was Michael James, whose work you probably know. And sometimes, you know, the quilt nerds who hang out here in this little clubhouse, if you hang out for long enough, I mean, it's pretty wonderful. Like, you can't help but learn stuff about quilts. Like, like for real, that's all we do, you know? Um, so, you know, Michael James, like, if you've been watching Quilt Nerd, like, you're just like, oh, yeah, I totally know who that is. Uh, if I say, you know, names like Molly Upton or Susan Hoffman, some of you will be like, oh, yeah, totally. And you're familiar with this material, which is very exciting, you know. Um, you'll know a lot more than people you think might know some stuff. The quilt nerds are going to be like, you know, you're going to be like uh, head of the class, right, on a lot of this stuff. But if you don't know who I'm talking about, don't worry about it. You know, to watch the show, to enjoy the show, you don't have to, like, be a quilt nerd already. I mean, God, that would be that would be fun in one way, but it wouldn't be realistic. So if you're interested in quilts and quilt culture and the history of quilts, um, just keep keep watching and keep hanging out with this. And suddenly you'll find yourself one day uh, being like, well, I find Molly Upton's work uh, derivative, but I do think that she was pushing the boundaries of what was happening in the and Nancy Halpern possibly was the pictorial elements. I mean, you'll start to be annoying, right? You'll start to be like very annoying like all of us when we talk about quilts and you'll bore people at, at uh, cocktail parties, but who needs them? You know, I, I need them. Okay. So, so Michael James wrote this uh, in 2003 about, uh, you know, he wrote for the exhibit, this uh, exhibit of, of Donald's work and the exhibit was called the work of touch. Okay. And it went from February 7th, oh, again, another like anniversary to March 7th. Wow. Wow, that's kind of that's kind of spooky. My my soundboard isn't plugged in, but I'd play the Twilight Zone music. Yeah, like uh, exactly 20 years ago today, there was this exhibit, and almost exactly 10 years ago today, Rod Godonnell passed away. I don't know, man. Maybe we're in sync, babe. Babe, I feel like, babe. <laughs> Patty Oker. Oh my God, it's so good to see you. Okay, so Michael James writes. Rodka Donald's quilts break many of the rules that have governed how quilts were designed and made for much of the last 200 years and longer. They pay little heed to grids or to symmetry. Their colors are riotously and impulsively juxtaposed. They eschew fine stitching in favor of the functional and the no-nonsense. They avoid the familiar small-scale, graphically assertive patterns. The bold surfaces of these fabrics compete with and against one another in frenetic dances of exaggerated 
exaggerated visual energy. He's really good. He's, he's, this is great. In this respect, her quilts challenge many of the compositional rules of formalist art in general. It is this daring risk to appear, uh, sorry, it is this daring to risk appearing visually eccentric or uncontrolled or anarchic, an anarchic, anarchy, right, that makes Rodka Donald's quilts so compelling and unforgettable. Hopscotch. Apart from their singular and idiosyncratic surface treatments, the artist sees in her quilts testaments of identity, connection, and healing. Let's look at Ms. Donnell. Let's see who she is. Yes, here she is. This is the woman, the woman herself, okay? Um, they become, her quilts become embodiments of the struggle across time and generations, across gender, across race and ethnicity, to map out a pathway for the self that is compassionate, loving, inclusive, and deeply human. The scale of most of these works reinforces that intent. Almost all comfortably accommodate a full reclining adult form. I love that, I have to say I love that. And this embrace of cloth and the body affirms the artist's humanist perspective, quote, the body is mortal. It is the site of danger, she writes in, in Quilts as Women's Art, okay? Back to the quote, quote, it is not one's own creation, but the work at the start of two authors, unquote. The physicality of the body and of its origins in the most physical of acts, mm, mm, mm. yes, it's true is the physicality of the body and of its origins and the most physical of acts is never far from Donnell's, concep Donnell's conception of what a quilt is. Listen, I've said that, I've said it before. It's like, you know, this idea that quilts are like fusty or musty or old fashioned. I'm like, ugh, they go on beds, people. Like I wanted to call the book that I wrote about quilts about, you know, my book that with C&T. Hey, Suzanne, I'm so, thank you for liking the stream. I wanted to call my quilt, or my book, uh, Quilts to Make Love Under. And Roxanne at CNT was like, you can't call your book that. And I was like, well, fine. I guess I want a book anyway. But I mean, I really thought that would be good, you know? Wouldn't that be a good book, Quilts to Make Love Under? So I called it Make and Love Quilts, as close as I could get. Anyway, it's available at Abe Books. I actually don't think we have an affiliate link for it. But anyway, um, so, okay, so back to Michael James. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm covering up the, uh, thanks, Lynn. Um, I'm covering that up with the chat. We'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. This is her. This is her husband, who she was married to for some time. Obviously, she's much older in that picture. I've got another picture of her a little bit later in life. Um, that's Dolph. Dolph, her husband. He looks like a Dolph, doesn't he? All right. Back to James. For the most part, the traditional quilt uh, acknowledges the primacy of mathematical order. Damn, Michael James. He's writing the hell out of this. This is really good. For the most part, the traditional quilt acknowledges the primacy of mathematical order and the logic of interrelated squares, rectangles, and triangles. It's not by accident that quilts are so often evoked when visual metaphors for partitioning of the land, especially the rural landscape, are needed. Quilts may be women's art, but their structural organization almost always conforms to a purview ascribed to the male sensibility, square corners, straight furrows, neat and precise rows, and ever continuing multiples. The view from above on the, onto the endless mid-American landscape stretching neatly and orderly on the horizon, to the horizon. The designs of, Rodka Donnell, designs of Rodka Donnell's patchwork surfaces rarely conform to any mathematical limitations or formulas. Um, rather, they're buoyant and exuberant. Hang on one second. Hang on, I gotta get my little pointer back. Okay. Their buoyant and exuberant energies flow out of a calculated disregard of the predictable and the containable. They may be maps, the territories, uh, but the territories they describe and record are not those of the visible world. Instead, they bear witness to the inner psychic world 
of separation, loss, anxiety, difference, and eventual redemption that qualifies each human life. Finally, Rod Godonnell's works are about touch, and the tactile quality and the appeal of the quilt has rarely been so palpable as it is in these constructions. Quilts are touchable, she writes. They are made by touch. They refer doubly to the body, itself touchable and touching, to the person as a body and the body of a person, the eminently hospitable, comforting, and enveloping nature of cloth and quilts, their purpose and their substance, make the quilt a solacing object. Quilts recall and embody the first and greatest solacing agent in our lives, our mothers." Unquote. This connection to the maternal is the fundamental, even elemental, link that connects every quilter ever made Sorry, every quilt ever made, interesting. And Rod Godonnell's quilts beautifully epitomize that association. They bridge the divides that have isolated high art from low, fine art from craft, women's work from male industry, and in their meditating capacity, they create a visual expression of affirmation, strength, and reconciliation. Michael James, I've had a few tangles with you, sir. You're not watching this show. You never will. I mean, if you do, that's amazing. I mean, like, that would be amazing. I'm not saying you'd never watch it because you just won't. I know. But, I mean, that was amazing. Like, thank you. That was absolutely gorgeous. And are you going to write a book? Like, you should write a book about her <laughs> or something. <laughs> I mean, you've written books about, like, stuff. But you should. I mean, that's, a, that's what's incredible. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I don't have my soundboard or I'd give you the round of applause. It was wonderful. I'm sure people agree. Um, mic drop, that's what I'm saying. Hey, Auntie Nino. Aunt, Aunt Nino. Thank you so much for subscribing. You've been subscribed for two months. Thank you so much. As a member, you're going to be able to watch that special, very special stream next month when I go to the Skirball Cultural Center and see a good part of the Fabric of a Nation exhibit with my mom. We're going to live stream from the museum. We're going to walk the whole gallery and see the whole thing and subscribers get to watch. It's going to be really fun. Okay, so let's look at some other quilts, okay? Because I'm, oh, and by the way, this, this quilt that I'm showing you now is called Eva's Garden from the Paradise Dozen. Eva's Garden from the Paradise Dozen, 69 by 53. It was made in 2006. Interesting. So this was made after that show that Michael James was talking about. Um, this quilt, this is an interesting one. I believe this is in the uh, museum uh, the, the, in San Jose, the Quilts and Textile Museum in San Jose. Birth of Tenderness. Uh, so, so you can see, I mean, you know, think about these titles, right? Uh, Demeter Rising is a quilt. I think probably the first, um, uh, oh, nice, uh, you know, awesome. Uh, the first quilt I saw by her, or that was made by her, was Demeter Rising. And actually, I have a picture of it over here. I tried to separate some different things. Let's see, like, like separate the, um, hang on, hang on. Okay, da 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 All in the screenshot. Hmm. Hang on, hang on. Oh, that's such a great quilt. Let's just leave it there. It's fabulous. This quilt, by the way, is in um, a book that I don't, I don't think it's available. But uh, oh, yeah. Well, hey, there's Demeter. Oh, Demeter's Return. Demeter's Return. We'll see that here in a second. But the, this one is also in there. Anyway, it's called. It's called. Lord, heaven, help me, help me. I just said heaven, help me. Heaven's like, we're busy. I can't help you with your book. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hang on. I'm going to find it. I need to find it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. You know, it's interesting. Like, some of these older books that I have, I mean, the, the resolution isn't great, you know, on them. But it's kind of exciting because I'm not saying books, that, you know, published in what was this? 1981, you know, couldn't have really high resolution quality photographs. But it's interesting because in 1981, like, you think about the art quilt and what was happening and what people were doing, you know, Rodka Don Donald's, like, you know, making her work and, and pushing the boundaries of what quilts can be. And, you know, and they're making these books as fast as they, they, they can, you know, with these groundbreaking 
artist. It's very, it's very cool. I don't know. I can't find that one. That's so usually, you know, you know me. I really do uh, the best I can with the file names so that I don't have to do that. But sometimes it happens. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do next. Um, I'm going to we're going to look at some more quilts and. I'm going to read to you. Wow, I'm going to read to you from her. Let's let the woman talk. What do you say, right? Because I've got some stuff from Robert Shaw, but I'm going to read just this um, one piece from her book. And, and I highly recommend this. Oh, now here's the problem. So when I talked about Radka uh, for the Patchwork and Prose Block of the Month segment months ago, um, I got fussed at with good reason because I was talking about this book and it's really expensive now because there aren't I mean when you go to a books I you know I think it's like $125 or something so so apparently you know it's becoming kind of a rare book um, but y you know keep looking keep looking around if you're at a used bookstore just all or maybe you know, maybe a feminist used bookstore if you're if you live in Portland Oregon perhaps you have one of those and um, and but just keep looking for it and and if you know somebody who has it it doesn't want it you know get it it's it's pretty special and and I just want to point out you know one of the reasons I like her I have a picture of the cover of the book right here um, one of the reasons I, I really admire her is she wrote a book called quilts as women's art a quilt poetics a quilt poetics I mean she was, she was a very intelligent um, um, deep thinker you know Rodka Donnell was um, she really she, she lived in Cambridge I believe for a long time and we'll, we'll read a little more biographical information about her before we uh, before we cut out and make this an actual short episode of Quilt Nerd but um, but let's see let's see what she has to say I mean, there's poems in, in her book actual, actual poems and they're pretty good <laughs> and she also writes and I'm gonna read uh, the first little part of chapter one uh, which is, is titled Out of Silence. I'm using my amazing book holder. It's so, so great. Look at this. Look, my no hands. Oh, no. Got a little problem there. Um, <laughs> great. Okay. Let's move me over here. Great. Hello. Okay. How are y'all doing? I, I'm not looking at the chat. Thanks, Steph. Uh, library. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. The library. You could get it there. All right. Here we go. So this is from Quilts as Women's Art, A Quilt Poetics. I'll show you a couple quilts as I read. Rodka writes, in the early days of contemporary quilt making, noted quilt pioneer Nancy Crow complained about the great isolation one suffers in this work. For me, this isolation has predominantly to do with silence, with all that silence ever did or didn't do for me and for all the women I have known. When I first started to make quilts, all my efforts were accompanied by questions, to speak or not to speak, to be silent or talk back, to explain or let it pass, to interrupt or let it be. These questions still preface my work and indeed my thoughts. It is as if I always have to deal first with silence to deal first with silence, with everything in myself and in the outside world that is silent. If I am to lift ideas and images out of silence, I must do so without offending or betraying the silence itself. Wow. This quilt is called Fullness. I was told that my mother gave birth to me silently. I was a blue baby and had to be, quote unquote, blue baby and had to be spanked before I would start crying. In earlier times, in Bulgaria, my country of origin, women kept a little stone inside their mouths to keep them from talking back or screaming. It was a woman's stone of wisdom or a poor people's chewing gum. I was told that, quote, when a man tells you that bulls can fly, then you nod and they can. Oof. Somewhere along the line, my head got tired of nodding. Yet no matter what I make or write, silence follows me as an echo. Silence is my best friend and my shadow. Silence is the permanent modifier, adjective, adverb, noun. Silence, of all I think and do, I work from silence and I speak out of silence. There may be a politics, an economics, and an aesthetics of silence but I don't want to make a theory of all that. 
Here, I will respond first to the comings and goings of silence and give its place and reality in my text. For even though there are now in innumerable quilt conferences, workshops, and exhibitions, and there is all kinds of sharing aloud about quilt making, its interface with silence is still the most sustaining, assuring, and calming reality of quilt work. Pause, quilt work. That's good. Quilt work. She uses a hyphen, quilt work. But you could almost do it without the hyphen. I like that, everyone. Quilt work, you know, not as like a title for. I mean, as a, as a, as a. I mean, as a noun, as a verb, you know, quilt work. When you're engaged in quilt work, I like that, and that would be a great name for a magazine or something or some kind of something. But I mean, quilt work. That's good. Okay. Uh, the rest of this little section, the women who come together to make quilts or to show them. Know this of one another. Uh, deserts were crossed, midnight oil was burned, and patience stretched to near infinity, in silence, out of silence. I begin with silence, not to romanticize quilt making or to locate it outside time and history, but to articulate the acts which it covers and the actions it contains. That was emphasized. In German, the word for silence is derived from the verb to still, literally to nurse. I begin with silence because it designates the first act of work a mother is called to perform for the newborn. Silence is a product and a productive force of women. It is subject to all the exploitation and denial that women's work receives. I begin with silence fully aware that I am violating most expectations of the likely themes and ideas to be treated in a discussion of contemporary quilts. Contemporary discussions of quilts seem to be mired down in acclaiming them as high art in appreciation of their formal innovations and the excitement of their designs. But the acceptance of quilts as art comes at too high a price for quilt makers. To have one's quilt stylized into art objects and to be accepted as an artist only on design terms is totally depersonalizing. Yet contemporary women take up quilt making in order to make a personal statement. And this is why the issues connected to quilt making and the forces of production they implicate have to be reconsidered. My experience has taught me that silence, the production of cloth, Demeter returns there on the right, the purple one, okay? Whoops, okay, hang on, hang on, wow, what happened, okay. My experience has taught me that silence, the production of cloth, and the work of touch are basic forces. All I can present in the way of theory is connected and has to be connected with my experience. I begin with silence this is the last section here. I begin with silence not only out of experience and political conviction but also because though silence is a material condition, that's interesting, it is insubstantial and it cannot be localized. Most metaphors under which women have been subsumed and their nature considered have been marred by the quality of limited mobility, limited access, passivity, and instrumentality. For example, consider the metaphors of containers and containment of women's body orifice, orifices, of opening and closing functions, or architectural features of enclosure. The sculptural metaphors, the architectural metaphors, and the structural metaphors have been part of keeping women and their art in place. Using silence as the overarching metaphor of my discussion of quilts, I intend to dynamize our view of the, mo of the emotional surround, the emotional energy, and the practical efforts that go into quilt making. Quilts also take women's art off the wall to make women themselves appear totally visible and monumental. Hmm. You know, one of the terms to describe Rodka Donnell is, uh, hey, Sherlock, what's up? Um, is, uh, is, you know, feminist, right? But I, I didn't want to 
mention that Michael James didn't use that word. Part of the reason his piece was so awesome, I think, because like you hear that word, some people hear that word and they they like think they know what's coming or they, you know, I don't know. It's one of those words, man. It's one of those words. And so it's like to just avoid that concept before we get to her writing, you know, it was great. Amazing, right? Like, wow. And, and, and when you talk, I don't know, like this, this show would not interest me. The, the content quilts would not interest me if things like this did not exist. Do you know what I mean? Like, there, there is great art and great movement and great, um, and great deep thinking that, that quilts inspire. And if there wasn't, I mean, I, I, I don't know. It would be like, like TV or something. Like, oh, yeah, like that, sh you know, not this show would be like TV. But just like I have no interest in like a lot of shows on television. I have no, you know, because there's nothing for me there. I don't, I don't care about the Brady Bunch. You know, it's like I can't really think deeply about the Brady Bunch, and I'm just wired like that, right? I just want to think about stuff because, like, what else is there? And and the reason that quilts transfix me and keep me interested is just because, gee, for God's sakes, Rodka, good lord! I mean, Manya, I mean, this is beautiful. It's ama it's it's amazing, amazing. And then she follows that with a poem, and then she goes back to the text she's writing in chapter one. I mean, can someone else write a book like this? Would that be okay? Like, I'd like to write a book like this, you know, that's just, I mean, there's, there's pictures in here. There's very few. They're in black and white, you know, but it's, this is like deep, this is deep thoughts, man. And I love it. The prodigal daughter's return. Anyway, fabulous. Okay. And I love, uh, I love to... <laughs> Um, I love to hear what you all have to say. Jacob Jellies, hi. But I'm gonna, I'm trying to keep this short, you know? I'm trying to keep it to an hour and we've got 12 minutes left. So I'm gonna read to you what Bob Shaw said about her. By the way, this is an exhibit that happened in the uh, New England Quilt Museum in 2009. And then one of Rodka uh, Donald's quilts was in the abstract design at 50 uh, exhibit that attended the, uh, the reboot of the American uh, abstract Design in American Quilts, the Jonathan Holstein, Gail Vanderhoof exhibit at the Whitney had its 50-year 50, 50 anniversary, and there was a, an attended exhibit. And one of her quilts was featured in that. And you know what? I don't know if my friend is watching, J.H. Kazan, but um, I, I recall seeing a picture that you had, like like photographs, like, like when photographs used to be physical objects. Um, of, of Rodka working in her studio. Am I, am I making that up? I, I'm not, I'm not. When I was at your house, I swear, I saw that. So if I, I don't think I, I don't think I scanned it. Anyway, I, I'm more interested in her than, than I was, what, three years ago? Anyway, so, so let's, uh, I'll show you the rest of the quilts that I have. And uh, I love this one, this is great. And, and I do know this is a pretty early one. Um, so Um, maybe it's this, maybe it's this, sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's called, uh, hmm, Das Gross, G-R-O-S-S-E, Das Gross, T. Maybe is it the big T or something? Uh, it's a hundred inches by 84 inches. Yeah, 1974. Yeah, the big T. There it is. The artist based the dimensions of this quilt on the human body, <gasps> expanding a single block to monumental proportions. Monumental. There's that word again. She just, she had the, the word monumental in, that was the last word of the thing that I read. What did she say? It was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. And th that quilt is in one of the, the books that's, that I've pinned to the top. If you buy these, uh, yeah, Mark. If you buy these books through our affiliate link, we get a few a few uh, clams. <laughs> that means money. Um, okay, so yeah, I mean, she said, what did she say? It was so wonderful. She said, quilts also take women's art off the wall to make women themselves appear totally visible and monumental. Listen, one of the reasons I love her is because she makes these art quilts for the bed. You know, like one of the reasons I, I'm so into quilts at all is because they're functional. And when you put them up on the wall, it's like totally cool, man. But like, I, I love her because she was doing this like very exciting stuff 
and they were meant to be used by the body, you know? And, and also, like, we're really used to this. Oh, this is cool. This is cool. Um, this is called wholeness. Obviously, it's a scan uh, here. But, um, yeah, so we're used to things, right? We're used to seeing strip quilts and art quilts and, you know, all that. But consider, like, this is 1979, okay? It's 43 years old. I know because I was born that year. So, like, yeah, right? So she... You know, in 1979, it's like, when I looked at the Lone Star books, the Texas state documentation books, you know, they're so good. There's three of them. It's this three, three book set. I mean, in 1979, like, the bicentennial had happened in 76. People were doing pretty traditional things. I mean, for this person to break the grid, for her to, and I'll read the text here, but her, for her to break the grid, for her to use bricks that she used 1979 I mean it was pretty crazy now we know from britchy quilts and the everyday quilts you know that come out of uh you know the south and west virginia and and really anywhere people just really need a quilt for warmth you break the grid right so she's not the first person to be doing this definitely but to do it you know in this very you know sort of, I don't know, I, I hate to say intentional because all quilts are intentional. You know, you don't just throw scraps up and see where they land and sew them down. You know, every choice you make as a quilt maker is intentional. You're making a choice about the fabric you're using, how you cut it, how you sew it. Like, it's intentional. It's not a mistake. The approach, I think, that she was taking was exciting. So this, uh, Bob Shaw wrote, uh, this is commercial fabrics, hand-pieced by the artist and machine quilted by Claire Mikey, M-I-E-K-E, dimensions unknown. Uh, Donald says she stepped out of the art scene, quote unquote, when she began making quilts more than 40 years ago, and she stayed with quilt making because it helped her to find wholeness and to be open to enjoy and validate the creativity of other women. How cool is that? She explains, quote, in my work in cloth, I not only work out my longing for a more perfect contact and union with other persons, but also strive to express universal human fears of oppression and death. Making quilts has become for me a struggle to secure a social space that is inviolable, fecund, and hospitable to a sense of self and of the human community, nourished by the spirit of the goddess a new consciousness protective of what is left of nature on this planet. Within, she says, let's see, da, 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 da. yes, yes, within the field marked by the quilt's borders and against the background of their traditional geometric block structure, I've striven for my liberation as a person by creating freer expressive structures than I could have in any other material. The format of a quilt, sized by its reference to the body, allows me to bring my emotions and body feelings to life size, to create from the body outward, and to focus toward the body through the work of, of touch necessary to piecing. The intimate connection between my emotions, the materials I use, how I touch them, and how the final product is used, namely to warm and celebrate others, all this helps me to give my best." Unquote. Oh. Quilt church sound. Fully. Oh, yeah. Auntie Sin's like, my pagan brain just asked which goddess. Well, well, I don't know my goddesses, Sin, sadly. Babe's going to be very disappointed as well, I feel. I don't know. I have a hunch. But, um, you know, Demeter. Wait, Demeter was a goddess, right? Yeah, yeah. Demeter's Return was one of the quilts we saw. This is called Julie's Quilt. Julie might be a goddess. I don't know. I've never heard of the goddess Julie, but who knows? You know, Jules. Um, this is 1977. It's called Julie's Quilt, 80 by 92. Uh, this to me looks very 1977. Like, it's just in this way, in this art quilt way. You know, the plaid, like the flannels. Flannels and, yeah. I mean, if I showed you some Susan Hoffman right now, some Molly Upton, you'd be like, yeah, they were, they, it was a school. I mean, it's, it wasn't an actual school, but you know what I mean? Like the Chicago school or, you know, the Dadaists, whatever, you know, all these times, these times in history when it's like this uh, incubator somehow, even if people are not really talking. But, but shows started to happen and stuff, you know. I forget when the Dairy Barn started, but, you know, 
or cool national i think it was a little well when did you know what can somebody look oh i love it oh my god you people are so awesome um uh when did quilt national begin somebody can probably find it in like three two one <laughs> but you know the shows started to happen so they were going to shows and all that so okay so in the time that we have left yeah corduroy mark corduroy all day with these quilts corduroy the house believe me here's what robert shaw said on the occasion of radka's death robert shaw said ooh, 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 wait <laughs> this this quilt is called the plumage of the ascending goddess the plumage of the ascending goddess cottons and blends hand and machine piece by radka Don donnell uh, quilted by this Claire uh, Mielke again, 70 by 90. And, and she says of this quilt, and this is where I'm going to leave it on, leave it so I can read this thing and not interrupt myself. Uh, Ranka said, quote, a sense of rebirth and being helped to a higher level of self was the guiding impulse of this work. I started at the edges and moved in and up, pulling myself out of every kind of rut and low. I like this one. I like this one a lot, actually. You know, this new way to do this, showing you pictures, y'all, is really good. Getting rid of the little rulers is kind of annoying, but it used to be, like, I couldn't I couldn't bring this over and do this for you before. I don't know if, if you've kind of noticed that, but it's, it's way better. Because this, you know, anyway, the quilt's on one side, and it would, like, bounce and stuff over there. Anyway, anyway. So life is good. Um, here we go. I'm going to leave it right there and read this. Bob Shaw says, in 2013, I'm deeply saddened to share the news that the pioneering quilt maker Rodka Donnell died peacefully on February 13th, 2013 in Zurich, Switzerland, where she had lived for many years. She was 84. Rodka was one of the most extraordinary people it has been my privilege to know. And, I'm just gonna get my pointer. and I have been honored to represent her work to the public. Rodka, who started making quilts in 1965, was a trailblazer whose work and example influenced and encouraged many of today's leading quilt artists. Her quilts were utterly distinctive. Um, she was one of the most important and influential quilt makers of the past 50 years. A pioneer of modern quilt making, she began making quilts in 1965 sorry, and continued to produce remarkable work until shortly before her death. She was one of the first academically trained artists to adopt the quilt as her medium, and she pioneered in exploring what quilts can mean and look like, challenging both traditional quilt makers and the fine arts establishment with her visually powerful and emotionally expressive work. She was also the author of the eloquent book, Quilts as Women's Art, A Quilt Poetics, and was featured in the classic 1975 film, Quilts in Women's Lives by Pat Ferrero. I have a short clip of that. I don't think we're going to watch it today, but if you Google quilts in women's lives, you'll see a very short clip of it. Her work is represented in the collections of the International Quilt Study Center and Museum, the Museum of Arts and Design, the New England Quilt Museum, and the San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles. She was born in Bulgaria in 1928, came to the United States in 51. She studied painting at Stanford and earned her MFA at the University of Colorado. She began making quilts uh, uh, and said, quote, laying out and piecing quilts gave me a sense of wholeness and certainty that I lacked as a painter. Huh. She created more, whoa. She created more than 700 quilts over her lifetime, all of which she pieced together by hand or machine. She has never quilted her own work. Interesting, which was instead machine quilted by Missouri sewists, Claire Milky, Milky, Linda Brady, Ruth Alex and Ann Carter and the no-nonsense machine quilted surfaces of her quilts were as radical and shocking to many early viewers as were her abstract painterly designs. How interesting. Ooh, I don't think we've seen this one yet. This is called Skin of Spring, 1977. Who's that? Who said I love this show? Who said I'm still here and I love this show? I just saw it, but then... Oh, okay. Yeah, Kitty, Kitty. I feel like I've been in Lurker's Lounge lately. Oh my God, Kitty, it's so good to see you. I'm still here and I love the show. I love that. I love that. Any lurker, but I feel like that's a clarion call to the lurkers. I'm still here and I love this show. Okay. Although she always intended her quilts to be functional, 
McDonald's designs broke with tradition in many ways and remain unique today. She always worked quickly and intuitively. She used whatever fabric she had at hand, often cutting up cloth, clothes as well as pieces of cloth she gathered or that others had sent her. At first glance, her quilts can seem casual or even disorganized, but they are actually carefully balanced compositions, holes that are decidedly more than the sum of their parts. She never organized her abstract designs around the repeating geometry and grid structures of traditional piecework. Instead, she freely juxtaposed shapes patterns and colors she found expressive. The pieces she cut were often quite large. Come on, buddy. You're okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Were often quite large. I want to zoom in again. Okay, yeah. Um, and she fearlessly combined bold prints and vivid solid colors uh, in ways that horrified, oh yeah, many traditional quilt makers, I love it. Her quilts are in one sense fabric paintings, mosaics of irregularly shaped and sized pieces intended to evoke and elicit feelings and states of mind. While Donald's designs are decidedly modern, the meanings she found in quilt making were deeply traditional. She wrote, oh, this is good, y'all. She wrote that quilts are, quote unquote, good objects. She wrote that quilts are good objects which symbolize and embody a human touch, warmth, comfort, and the primal bond between mother and child. Ooh, that's deep. <laughs> um, she said quilts are, uh, quote, are and also stand symbolically for the pleasures of closeness with a desired object. They provide a full and lasting, though silent embrace, unquote. Like all traditional bed covers, Donald's quilts were intended to heal and connect people. In the early 70s, Donald lived in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and her decidedly non-traditional quilts strongly affected, here we go, many younger artists in the region, including Sylvia Einstein. I don't know that, I don't know, who is that? Who's that person? I've never heard her name in my life. Sylvia Einstein, Michael James, Rhoda Cohen. She was one of the founders of Quilt National. And I, oh, that's 79, that's what people were saying about 79. 700 quilts, unbelievable. Clee vibe, yes, Ivy. Okay, Sylvia Einstein, love it. Rhoda Cohen, yes. Nancy Halpern, yep. And her protégés, her protégés, Molly Upton and Susan Hoffman. So they were like learning at her knee. Oh, this woman needs a book. I don't have, listen. Why, my soundboard, I loaned it to Eric. He's like starting, Eric's starting to stream doing the New York Times crossword puzzle. So if you want to, watch him do that. He's very good at it. Anyway, on Twitch. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't have time to write all these books. Somebody write a book about this woman. If I had my soundboard, I'd do the goose honk. You got, somebody's got to do this. I mean, wouldn't it be wonderful to have a, a nice, like, coffee table book about Rod Donnell and all these quilts in one place, you know? It's like, if, if quilts are going to be, if, not that we need their freaking, like, stamp of approval, but, like, quilts are art, okay? obviously quilts as women's art okay but we have to make sure that they're in the mix with all the other art books right that's that's our that's our task i think you know if we're like we we're art like stuff i'm i'm art craft non-binary right i don't i believe that the distinction is false but the you know to 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 help that along if people ask you who your favorite artists are, you know, it's like, okay, Diane Arbus, um, uh, Whistler, and uh, Rod Cadonnell. Like, yeah, we have to start talking about them in the same breath as any artist, right? And so if Faden, Faden, I don't know how you pronounce that, that publisher, uh, if the most fabulous, you know, art books at some fancy museum display if those books contain a Rod Cadonnell book by Faden, some beautiful, oversized, gorgeous thing with all of her quilts and some of her writing and like, you know, in, in, in the introduction, you know, a Molly Upton quilt and a Susan, God. <sighs> okay, someone do it, please. I would like to read it. Okay, just a little bit left here. Oh. I'm over. I got to go. Uh, I mean, it's 6.03. Okay. Um, she was instrumental in securing and organizing shows of her own and other contemporary quilts 
uh, and, and in seeking respect, recognition, and reward for quilt artists on equal footing with those working in recognized media. She recalled, quote, when I first saw quilts in a museum, they were in the in back of the exhibition rooms in the hall leading to the ladies room. Ugh. What I had dimly perceived until then, I realized clearly and resolved to change. Namely, the arts or crafts made by women were always given the rear entrance and it was time to get them to enter through the grand front entrance. In, unquote, her 1975 exhibition with Susan Hoffman and Molly Upton at Harvard University's Carpenter Center for the Arts Right, right, okay, now I know. Marked the first time contemporary quilts had been shown in such a prestigious art gallery setting. You're welcome, Harvard. Trained as an art therapist as well as a painter, Donald became a champion of quilt making as a women's healing art. She was the first quilt artist to take a feminine stance and speak of quilts as a liberation issue. Quilt making politicized me, she noted. In her lectures and writings, she eloquently articulated the expressive possibilities of the quilt and made a powerful case for the quilt as, quote, an associative field of the body, unquote, a direct link to the most primal human needs and acts. She wrote in 1977, quote, by its original closeness to a person's body, the quilt can become an icon of personal feeling and hope. This is its nature, invoking no absolutes, but open as, a, as to a human embrace. Well, how about that? Isn't that good? Angelina says, I love her. Babe says, I love her too. I think we're all in agreement. She was a badass. What a badass, you know? I mean, I'm sorry. I don't usually, I don't usually say the this, this swears on this show, but I mean, she was a badass. Um, and this, so here's a quote from her. Let me just hide the chat so you can read it. Um, Eric and I watched, uh, what's the new Star Wars the new Star Wars thing on Disney is unbelievable. It's, it's so good. Andor? Yeah. Oh, God. We binged it all one night. It was amazing. And there's this one character, and <laughs> Eric said of her, <laughs> it was so cute how he said it. He's like, she's such a little badass. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I just love it. So, Rod Donald, you're such a little badass. Um, my, yeah, I mean, I'll let you read that quote. You can see that up there. Exciting, exciting to read about her. Oh yeah, there was a picture of her older that I wanted to show. She looks great, she looks so cool. Here she is, yeah. And this is the picture that's with her Wikipedia entry. Um, good stuff, Mark, right? What a good time this is. Oh yeah, yeah, Andor is, I mean, we gotta talk about that later. Anyway, whew, Lisa Makes, Lisa Makes, is you're getting welcome baskets, Lisa makes. I'm gonna put one in there for you too. When you are new uh, at uh, at Quilt Nerd, you get some love. You get some love around here. I'm so glad that you're watching, and I hope that you enjoyed the show. If you missed some of it, you can watch the the rerun. You can watch the the replay, replay gang, um, on the Twitch channel and on the YouTube's. I think as well. Um, it's good over here on Twitch. You can subscribe and stuff, which is great. It helps support what I'm doing here. And, uh, and you, you get stuff. You don't have to watch ads. It's good. It's good. And it's just fun. So anyway, everybody, welcome. Yeah, anybody following the stream and all of that stuff, you know I appreciate you so much. And uh, tell somebody else. If you're like, there's this really interesting show. It's different. I've never seen anything like it. It's cool. <laughs> I hope you're talking about Quilt Nerd and you should tell somebody. Why not? You know, check it out. So um, I think that's it. I got to go back and not. Oh, my God. Okay, Rodka, hang on. It's kind of creepy. Um, I got to go back and finish that writing I'm doing. <sighs> it's intense, guys. It's very intense. But uh, I love that you stopped by. And, yeah, maybe on the Saturday night show, because we've got a show on Saturday night at 8 o'clock. Uh, that um i'll kind of maybe do a poll see see if this was a good time for folks I, I don't know i don't know we're trying to figure out you know what what works and maybe things sh uh maybe things shift thanks cake maybe things shift and keep shifting and that's the answer right we just move the show around um all the time <laughs> okay i'll see you on saturday night eight o'clock uh, p.m central time it's gonna be good be well everybody thanks for tuning in for this cool nerd shorty okay bye